בת הבת אלוהים. אביאל אלבת אלוהים. And we're starting at the end of that line, Masha and King. We started this already, but we are going back a little slightly so that we have a continuity. Yeah, so we start from, from my beginning. Okay. <clears throat> Specifically, what we're discussing right now is the principle that the Gemara says that the Nuhu of Moshe Rabbeinu was in different category than the Nuhu of all other Nevi. And the way the Yamara describes the difference is by using the words with which their Nebuahs began. Moshe Rabbeinu, like in today's Pasha, it says, Zehadoba, Ashativa Hashem. Rashi brings this down, Zehadoba. All the Nebuahs, their Nebuah, um, at the highest level, began with the word Koyom Hashem. And the, the Gemara is inferring to say that koi means thusly, but not this precise thing. This is like a reflection of what Hashem said. Zerad means this is exactly this is exactly what Hashem said. The Rebbe goes in in great effort to explain to us that clearly we do not mean that Moshe repeated Hashem's words correctly and then Vim only approximated what Hashem said. They all repeated Hashem's words correctly, exactly what Hashem told them to say. Question is, what did they recognize? What did Hashem show them? To Moshe Rabbeinu, Hashem showed the, the, the essential thing itself, the real thing. To them, to the Nevi'im, He showed something that reflected the real thing, a demus. So how do they know it was Hashem, basically? Or how do they know... No, they, 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 um, there are many ways that they knew that Hashem is showing it to them, is telling to them. And, um, and the fact is, as we're going to learn further down, that in order even to receive the Nevoah at that level, they, 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 they had to, to uh, reach a point of concentration that is beyond the normal. Moshe Rabbeinu, I think Torah says, Moshe Rabbeinu stood and Hashem spoke to him, Ponim al Ponim. 
like a man speaking to his friend. This was the only the only case like that, the only exclusive situation like that. Like he didn't have to get into such a he didn't have to change. Right? He did have to get into, but he was always in that state. Right. Okay. He didn't have to change from one state to the other. Whereas all other Nevi'im, they were at a much lower level. And in order for them to receive Nevu'a, they had to kind of shed, remove the garments of the world in order to, to become aware, to be elevated to that spirit, level of spirituality that they can receive this Nevu'a. And then when they received that Nevu'a, it was only Koi, it was only a reflection of Hashem's words rather than than the actual reality itself. Yes, sir. So was that given over by a malach to them? Was that given by Hashem? Like Hashem spoke to Moshe, it wasn't through a malach, it was through Hashem himself. To Moshe. There are different madrigas. There are occasions where the malach was speaking to them, to him. Like for instance by Avraham Avinu. Avraham Avinu was told to take Yitzchok. He doesn't say a malach. Called, told, spoke to him. It says Hashem spoke to him. I am a king. Um, when when it came to to interrupting his activity, that he should not touch his hook, it says Vayikra Malach Hashem. A Malach called him. So this was a different Madrid. This is an important, an important thing to, to recognize, that I mentioned it already, although, you know, the, it's, a, it's a broad subject, but since we mentioned it, Hashem told Abraham, put Yitzhak on the Mizbeach. A Malach came and stopped him, in the name of Hashem. But Hashem's word itself still remained intact. Hashem didn't retract his word. Hashem's word retracted. A Malach came and and, uh, so to speak, intervened in the middle by Hashem's command. He told him, don't, don't follow through on it. But Hashem's word to put Yitzhak on the Mizbeach still remained. This is why Yitzhak is still on the Mizbeach. This was never retracted. And this chus, this chus, the merit of Yitzhak being on the Mizbeach was never retracted. It's still there. Because Hashem never retracted his word. He stopped the, 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 the execution, so to speak. The execution, I mean, the follow through, the action. But Yitzhak is still on his bed. That's what it says. And I promise you, Yitzhak, that Hashem sees Aforish and Yitzhak all the time. Doesn't have to be reminded of it. By Rome, it says Eske, by Yankee, by Yanke, it says Eske. By Yitzhak, it doesn't say Yitzhak because Yitzhak is constantly there. And this is, one thing that one of the, of the indicators in the Torah itself that Avram, that Hashem never retracted his word, he didn't say take him down. Malach told him to take him down. And Avram took him down because the Malach told him. But Hashem's word still remained. So, so how, come, how come Avram listened to the, to the, the Malach that told him to take him down? He didn't listen to the Malach that told him to stop the whole time he was going there. I'm saying that it was, it was, the Malach told him. The Sotan. No, no, no. The Sotan is something. Like, oh, that, that he had no problem distinguishing. He had no problem. The Sotan came to interfere with his activity, mm-hmm. make it difficult for him to, to do it. But if he knew it was the Sotan straight up, then how come he. The, oh, if he knew it was the Sotan straight up, then how come. I mean, obviously he knows the Sotan's tricking him. It's not much of a test. If the Sotan's coming and he knows it's the Sotan. But the Sotan is whispering in your ear. What are you doing? Are you off your mind? Or wasn't it, didn't something come in the form of like a person? He came in the form of alternate things. He came in the form of a lake. Where Rome was drowning. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. I haven't left it there. But the, um, the prophecy of Moshe was always, was always heard. It wasn't like, was it ever through like visions like you said in Merkava? When Yechazka saw the Merkava, that was like a vision. The Moshe ever see vision? Those are always like words. But that's not relevant. Moshe, that's not really relevant. 
and Moshe was, he didn't have to see the vision because he was right there. He went, he went up to the mountain and he was right there with the Malachim and he saw the entire, the entire entourage and everything that was going on. Um, okay, in, uh, back to the Mimer and the, the point of the Mimer. The point of the Mimer is to explain essentially the difference between Zen and Koi. The inner of Moshe, the bringing down that Moshe Rabbeinu Snehu was Zen and Vim was Koi is in order to en- enable us to have, have a grasp and understand what Zen and Koi is. But the, the focus of the Mimer is to understand the principle of Zen. And we explained this many times, I mean, we have to understand the, the implication of what they again. It does not mean that this is more correct, that Moshe Rabbeinu repeated Hashem's word more correctly, and then Vim less correctly. That is unconscionable, that could not be. It is that. Just like in, in human parlance, you can repeat the words that the person said to you, or you can paraphrase it. Paraphrase is exactly the same message. But it's not the message. And it lends itself to different kinds of interpretations. It certainly doesn't have the precision of what was said. So in paraphrase, you cannot dig in and learn, you know, uh, what was the implication of this word? There's no implication because you're not really repeating the, the, the real thing. This is like the Indian from Koi. They paraphrased, they presented the, the, the message, but they didn't, they, but they didn't uh, have the said, they didn't the real thing. Okay. So now we're coming to the, we discussed the wetland Indian from Moshe Rabbeinu, that this is like Re'iyo, this is like insight. We explain that insight. Um, insight. In, um, as as opposed to all other faculties, we discuss in great detail that in insight you see the real thing. In all other faculties, you you have the effect of that thing, the impression or the effect of it. Inside, you see the real thing itself. Masha is called Ri'iya. Masha in Cain. Whereas, in contrast, Kmei Shabo Bebchina Zislapshus, when Dinavua comes in a Hislapshus manner, Bemido is Chagas Unahi. By Moshe Rabbeinu, it was the way it was in Chochmah. But when it comes to Nevi'im, it is when the Nevi'im, it comes with his lapsus in Chagas and Nevi'im, which means in Midas of Chasad Gurati Feres, and that's a Hoidi Seid. Now, Midas also represent Elokus. By Avram Avinu, for instance, his whole Aveda was Mirza Chesed. By the way, Avram Avinu's Aveda was Mirza Chesed. The Mirza Chesed Avram Avinu was not a human kindness. And he felt good when he does a kind act. Avram Avinu's Mirza Chesed, the kindness, was there exclusively because it reflected the kindness, the, the divine kindness. Hashem's kindness. Let us discuss this briefly. Otherwise we will not understand how this is, has to do with Nevoa Chagasana. Human kindness is something which is which is limited to the human being, where a person feels good for many various reasons, for various angles. If you see somebody is in, in distress, you personally feel hurt, you feel badly, 
and you want to alleviate this, this uh, hurt, this distress. This is like rach, rachami. You feel badly for this person. You want to alleviate this pain. It's a personal reaction of the human being. A person who does not have uh, mercy, does not have uh, um, um, a, a sympathetic feeling for somebody in distress, is, is simply what's called a heart, you know, a, a stone-hearted. But it, it is natural for a human being to have that type of, of, of a reaction. Even, uh, even the, the maximum, the Nazis sometimes showed a, a certain softness, they couldn't tolerate uh, certain things. Because it's a natural human reaction. This is not the Chesed of Abraham. This is not by Abraham did a Chesed. The principle of Chesed of Abraham, you know, as I said, was the principle of Chesed, of Hashem's Chesed. What is Hashem's Chesed? The fact, okay, I'm just going to give you, give you a, a general overview. The world, as we are observing it, now, let's project, um, uh, let's analyze a little bit what's going on in the world. The world needs vegetation in order to live and survive. It needs all kinds of animals, trees, fruits. It needs summer and winter, and it's sun, and it's rain. All of these things are practical uh, requirements of the of survival of, the, of, of, of life in the world. What does the world, for survival purposes, need a huge firmament, a view of, of infinity, of infinite space? Is this something necessary for, for daily survival? You understand what I'm saying? Doesn't, it's not necessary. In general, the infinity that is contained in the world, the infinite um, display of grace, display of, 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 of grandeur that is contained in the world, this is not necessary, so to speak, for survival purposes. As a matter of fact, we discussed this many times. I want to remind you, um, we spoke about breathing. Remember that breathing? That breathing, the way a person breathes, and I'm sure we discussed this, that breathing, although to us it appears that we are taking in, we are breathing in, we are breathing out, but the actual function of breathing takes place somewhat different. What happens is that there is, there is a huge, there's 500 feet, 500 miles um, mass of air right around us. I don't have to tell you, you, you studied in high school. And this mass of air creates enormous air pressure, like 14 pounds or something like that. This air pressure is constantly pressing. This is what's holding everything, all our, all our internal organs together and our blood together and so forth. Then, when our lungs get emptied, then the air pressure automatically flows into, into our lungs without any effortlessly. Effortlessly. Now, it is possible to survive physically by breathing in and out from a, from a tube to the nose. A person like you who does not, who is not able to, that's what you have to do. It's possible to survive. But the experience of living in open air space and breathing from an infinite resource versus reading, being from the tube is a totally different experience. Totally different experience. Experience through the tube is survival. Experience from the open space, open air, is living. Is living? Living. That's what a person expresses, you know, oh, you know, fresh air. He, f he feels life all over himself, everywhere, not just coming through his nostrils. He gets the air, not that which comes from the nostrils exclusively. He gets the, he gets the sense that 
that there is a, a resource, a source of life all around him. It's a completely different experience. Now this experience, this element in our life, which is rampant in every respect, even I said in breathing, but it's rampant in all our experience, in, our, in all our view, in our recognition of the world and all that, this is not for survival purposes. This is not, so to speak, a scientific need. This is a godly gift. This is called chesed. The gift of infinity. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a different, this is, this is the chesed, el that is, that is everywhere. This lifts the, 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 the world to a godless status, to a status of, of infinity, of a completely different experience than just survival. world is just survival. But this gives the world a sense of, 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 uh, of, of a godly reality, which is called chesed. This chesed is the key. This Godly Chesed is such that it knows no bounds, it, knows no, it doesn't discriminate against anything. Everything is supplied with this greatness. Every creature. As it says, Hashem supplies us every creature. Avram's Chesed came from, from recognizing this Chesed and translating and bringing this chesed into his everyday life. To show the world, to show the Arabs that were, that were in his time, who bowed to the dust of their feet, to show them that there is godly grandeur, godly chesed in the world, this was Avram's Avoid. Avram's, Avram's. So this is just to illustrate the point. So this this chesed, this is like the the godliness being mislabish. Mislabish meaning being contained and manifest through through an element of chesed. When it's mislabish in chesed or in all other midas, then it's no longer the initial godly reality. It already had been, so to speak, retranslated, paraphrased, paraphrased in Chesed, in Gvura, in Tiferes, although it is, still has this infinity, got the infinity, but, but it's not the original pure truth itself. It's how it's translated in Midas. This is what we're saying. So when it is Bihislapshus, Bechines Hagas Unihi, Achem Islabej Bimchines Malchus, all the way down, when the when the nevuah is mislabish in the elem in the aspect of malchus, shehu bechinas marudmus, where malchus is altogether a different element to, to altogether, and, and it is what's called bechinas marudmus. Mara means an appearance. Udmus means a likeness. So Malchus, this would be, you know, to definitively discuss it would be, would be, you know, taking us completely too much off the, of the topic. But in general, to understand that Malchus is that quality, that Mido, that is specifically uh, designed to represent, to represent to the outside the 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 the, um, the the principal reality, like in a human being, Malchus is how he he stands towards the outside. So they, in Malchus, it is marud mus. It is only what it appears like 
not the es- the essential, the real thing itself. So then, Harishayach Shon, so then, over there, that level is Shayach, is definitely possible, is applicable. The Hines Halomis has stated. The aspect of Halomis was stadium of consumes, which means you no longer see the real thing the way it is in its original status. You see it the way it comes through at the lower level. Memele, and therefore automatically, as a result, ye shom hevdel vechiluki madreis. Over there there is a difference, a separation, and a different madreis, milo umato. The, the higher, the, the way it is up, the way it is on top, the way it is below, is very different. Because there, the way this, this, um, this um, um, element of, uh, of a locus that is in chesed is felt on a higher level. The way it is felt on a lower level is very different. The way you see the, the reality itself, you see the, the below and on top of exactly the same way. But when it is mislapsus and it comes um, um, presented in some other quality, then clearly it's going to be a difference from the way it is above and below. And as the oil continues, progresses, to, re- to descend further downwards, the Islapshus Yoiseir, with a greater degree of Islapshus, which we'll explain in a moment, Umasti Umafti, Umafrid, that Islapshus conceals and, and, and separates. What does this mean? This is just as we have described before, the Nehachesed in the world. <clears throat> now, for example, we pointed out that there is the godly grand greatness shown in the world, like the Moitome Ramel says, Hashomayim is sapping for it here. Hashomayim is sapping for it here. Over there you see, in a certain sense, you see infinity directly. When you come down into the earth, to the world, you see also infinity, but in a different form, infinity of species, infinity of, of, um, of, of different creatures, and, and um, how many there are, and so forth. Is that really infinity? One second, you know. It's coming inside the Um So this is all kinds of different, and it's completely different level. The more it is behislapsus, behislapsus means the more it is, it is presented in specific entities, behislapsus, but if you have an example, so to speak, the less oil there is, and the more the oil is behestus, concealed. Huh? Oil? Oil, oil. Or. or. Uh, light. light. I mean the brightness, the... the, the, the the, the God in the sight. Like, we, um, ultimately, when you go down all the way to the physical, physical reality, although everything physical really represents a godly element, but when you go down to the physical reality, you can lose sight that there is a godly element in, all, in it altogether. Because it's so concealed, contained in this, in this um, hislapsus, in this physical entity, that you don't see. You see, I, all I see is a, is a piece of wood. I don't see anything else. Now, if you speak about the table, remember, we speak about a table. A table is a piece of wood, but it's a wood in a certain form. So somebody says, oh yeah, it's a very nice piece of carpentry. Very nice piece of carpentry. Is that compared to somebody realizing that, that the concept behind it is, is a human concept? 
but a human being sits in front of a table and learns. It's, an, it's an incomparable. So the more it's the hislapsus, the more the oir, the significance of it, and this, the, the, the ruchlis of it is concealed. This is what happens when things come with his lapses. And so by Nevi'im, it comes with his lapses in Midas, of Ches, Hagas, and Hagas, and, and, uh, and um, Nehi, and all the way into Malchus. That's it. By Nevi'im, you don't have the real thing the way it was by Moshe. And therefore, the whole Hanevi'im, by all the Nevi'im, all the Nevi'im, when they received Nevo'ah, they could not stand like Moshe Rabbeinu, like you mentioned before, Moshe Rabbeinu stood in full faculty, full control of himself, and received the Nevo'ah from Hashem. But the Nevi'im, this was not possible. It was called Havshotas Hagashmius. They had to, so to speak, remove, shed the Gashmis. Then at that moment, they were only aware of the Ruchnis, they're not aware of the Gashmis. The Hechrech. The Hechrech means this was imperative. It needed to be that way. There's no other way that they can receive the war. Kameshokosov, as it says, Vayiv Shoid Gamhu as Begodom. This is the Pesach by, by Shol HaMelech. Shol HaMelech went and he came to a place where Nevi and Nevi, Bnei HaNevi'im were, were, were preparing for Nevi'im. So he too, by Yetzirah's God, he also removed his garments. Means he, there was a Havshotas HaGashmi. He also, removing the Gashmi, the garments does not mean he undressed. It means that he removed his connection to Gashmi's. And he was also saying Nevi'im. Behind the Havshotas HaGashmi's that he was totally unaware of his Gashmis, the Gam, and even furthermore, Bitul HaChushi, Kiyodua. Bitul HaChushi, which means the Chushi, the Chushi means the senses. He, there was no, he could not sense with his, with his physical senses the, the Gashmis, uh, the Gashmis uh, presence. Like touch, smell, whatever it is, bit la khushi. In order to receive the Nabu. This bit la khushim is an interesting story. I mentioned it, I think, here more than once. In the Rebbe Rashab, the Rebbe, he was a young child. He was a very a ruch music, a child. A moment said, Yerushalayim from, from enormous Yerushalayim from child and on. And he was, uh, you can imagine his learning in his avoda as a child. At a certain point, I remember what age it was, a very young age, he became ill. Ill to the point where he had to stay in bed. But it was the illness about, what was the illness? The illness was that he could not see Gashmius. He didn't see Gashmis. So he couldn't function in the Gashmis like the world. So the Rebbe Maharaj, the father, used to come to visit him. And when the Rebbe came, the Rebbe Maharaj used to walk with a silver cane. This was like a sign of... of this was a, a, a special thing that Rebbe Maharaj said. He, he lived in a very uh, extravagant manner. So he, he had a, a silver cane with him all the time. So this silver cane, the Rebbe Rashab, the son, was able to see. My father's cane, he said right beside my father's cane, I was able to see. So the Rebbe Maharaj left the cane by his bed. So this was his connection to the Gashmistic world, through this silver cane. This is and um, by other Nevi'im, except for Moshe Rabbeinu, the Nevi'im required that there was 
Mavshot is hachushi, big lachush, that he had no connection to Gashmis at all, because Gashmis would interfere with it. Vahainu, and that is, Mipnei Shenevu Osam Hoisa, because Adei Nevu was Mimadrego Kuzu, from such a Madrego, Shenege Yashom Halavush Vahest. where the garment is af- affecting it. The game is it affects it. The Hainu, which, which means, what Madrege is that, the Hinas Mared Vus Kweid Havai, only the Mare, the appearance of the likeness of, of Kweid Havai, the Hinas Malchus, which is Din Hamalchus. Shehi Haora Habo, the Hinas Islam should be Alomus with Hestim. I'll explain the union from Ha'ori in a moment, and then we'll get a little bit better with your estimates. So this is Bechinas Malchus, which is Ha'ora, which is only Ha'ora. There is there are two terms, Oir and Ha'ora. Oir means light, and Ha'ora also means light in a certain sense. But Ha'ora means, means a, a reflection or illumination. Ha'bo Bechinas Yitzlapshus, which comes in a hislapsus ma- manner, the halomes we have stating, along with concealments that allows for this aura to be mislapsh. This is an important concept that we have to understand, and then everything will begin to fall into place. The union of Oir and Haor. So I'd like that we should uh, understand. In our world, which is primarily in its natural stand, uh, 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 natural status stand, is dark. Right, our physical world is dark. Light comes to the world as a result of the sun shining. Now there are two types, two levels, there are many levels, but primarily two levels which I want to address of the sunshine in the world, of the effect of the sunshine in the world. One is the, the lower level, where the, the light of the sun hits a physical object in the world. That light is deflected from the object and it hits the eye and as a result of that we can see the object. This is the physical phenomenon of sight. You see the object because light hits it and is deflected from it. Now, please understand, the light that hits it is light from the sun. Now the sun does not know, quote, so to speak, a man of speech, that, that, that such a thing as darkness exists. Darkness means that it is dark and you have to illuminate it, make it possible to, to, to have light. In the sun, light is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, so to speak, is a fundamental reality. Just like darkness by us, is fundamental reality. In the sun, light is a fundamental reality. Do we understand that? The sun is not like a candlelight that has a, a wick in the middle that burns it, that's dark. It's not light coming from darkness. The sun is light through and through. The whole concept of darkness doesn't exist in the sun. Therefore, the light of the sun is not does not have, so to speak, the, the, the quality of illuminating darkness. It's light because that's a natural state of being, to be light. This union that this light descends into our world and, and it becomes a light that can relate to darkness, essentially, and then be deflected from darkness and then you can see this is called the Ha'orah. 
This is what's called a subset of light. This is not the real light. So Haor is the lower level. The lower. This is called the Haor. It's a reflection of light. In other words, it has light on a functional level. Not on an essential level, like the, in, like in the sun. On a functional level, it makes it possible to see things. But this is not the real thing of light. Because primarily, even after the sun illuminates and, and makes it possible for us to see things, darkness still remains the reality of the world. You're able to see despite the fact that it's dark. Because the light makes it possible for you to see. So the, does Ha'ara nullify darkness at all? No, Not no, all. no. It makes it possible to see. No, it doesn't nullify darkness. Okay, that's good. It remains dark and now, but you can see because the light deflects from the object. This is called a subset. This is called a Ha'ara. A subset of light. Instead of subset, is the functional element of light, not the essential element of light. This is one thing. Then there is another phenomenon that is exclusively in the in the sunlight that does not exist in other type of lights, and that is that the sun illuminates our world not merely that they should be able to see objects, but it brings an element of what's called day. Day is not just plain light. Day, that actually changes the whole status of the world. It becomes daytime, which, which is a time of light and no darkness. That does not, is not it, it, it consists in the fact that you are able to see across the street. This is a completely different phenomenon. This is the, the change of, of the entire reality of the world. It becomes day. So it's the difference between the state of being and just to reflect, just like... Functionally, that's right. It's a state of being. That's what it says in the Pesach. Why you can like him, lo oir yoim. If we call like oir yoim, what's the difference between oir and yoim? The fact that I can see that's how at Sahara, and the fact that we are a state of light, the state of light, that's how our as far. That's right. That's young. That's oil. Yeah, that's right. Young is also, young is young is synonymous with that. Right. This is the reality of light itself. Now, anything that comes, be, okay, we have it. Can I go to the next step? Yeah, yeah. Anything that comes with his slapshots, which means it can relate to something other than itself, is called a haor. Now, it's how one thing affects the other. What? Would you mind repeating that? I'm sorry, I missed it. Yeah, sure. Anything that can come by his lapsus. By his lapsus means it can, it can be, um, it can affect something other than itself. Like the oil, the light hitting the table. The table is not light. The table is a piece of a piece of wood. Anything that can relate to something other than itself is not is not the, the essence. Not the essence. It's only a functional element of it. This is called the lapsus. Anything that can be hislapsus is only how. I'll, I'll, I'll come to you. Just want to give you an example, a little bit more. Let's say you have a concept. The concept is something that that occurred to you, that comes from, from, from your, from your uh, deeper thought, from your emotion, whatever it might be. And you want to explain this concept. And you explain this concept by using a, an analogy. Emotion. The element of that concept that is transmitted through the emotion is only a ha'ora. It's not the real thing. We're giving an example of how this concept affects under these circumstances. But it's not giving, you're not giving the real thing. You're giving a ha'ara, now it's an, an effect of it. This is called slapsus. So that's what he says. Once the anavua has to, comes to his slapsus, and whatever Madrigi says is chesed, guru, the slapsus, it's no longer the real thing. It's a ha'ara. And therefore, in ha'ara, there is definitely possible, not only possible, but it's imperative that there be halomis or hysteria, be concealment. Because the ha'ora cannot be in full glory, 
That's what the Ha'orah is. It, it has to be able to relate to the object to which it, it applies. Yes? So if we were to talk about like Ha'orah versus R in speech, or is like if you tell me something directly versus if I heard, if you, if I heard somebody else say what you said in a paraphrase, that's Ha'orah. Not necessarily, no. No, it's not. Yeah. You, I hear what you're saying. What we mean is something much more subtle, much more uh, deep. Because paraphrasing my words is essentially taking the same words in a different form. And um, uh, it is like translating in a different language. That's not the whole other. Ha'orim, um, as I said before, the, the the closest thing that we can that we can begin to talk about in human terms is like a concept being translated in a practical level. So that which comes in the practical level, this is already ha'orim from the concept. That's ha'orim. That's like ha'orim. That's the Well, the. The, ch- the Chochmah is the, is the concept. One second. Uh, our time is up, but I just want to give you a little food for thought. Um, Everybody knows what a car is, right? You all know what a car is? And a car is made to travel from one point to another point. Now, the idea, the concept in a human being, that a human being can relate to a distant point from where he is standing here now. He is here and he can relate to a point that is maybe a thousand miles, ten thousand miles away from the sun. That's not, that's, not, that's not a strange thing. That is part of the human capacity. That he, he relates to the entire world. And when the car came about and said, oh, you can go from here to here, it wasn't like a new human being. This was, yeah, well, it, it lends itself right by very well into, so to speak, in my in my perception of what life is. Of course I should be able to go from place to place. Why should I be limited being in one place? Right? Now, the car facilitates the ability to move from place to place. Now, Moving from place to place is a ha'orah of the principle, of the concept, that actually every place in the world is related to me. I'm not a stranger to any place. There's no place in the world I would say has absolutely nothing to, my, to do with my world. It's all one world. And I perceive that. This reality is is a much higher level of reality than the ability to travel from place to place. The travel, the movement, is like a ha'orah, like a subset of this reality. You got it? You got it? There's a light bulb going off in your head. You got it? Right? Huh? So, or the the realization is the... But did you get the point? Yeah. Did you get the point, Phil? I understand it in my head, but I can't verbalize it quite yet. Okay, well, that's enough to just... Okay, ha'ora. Ha'ora means a functional way of translating that which is a reality. I'll write that down. Just yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> what did you refer to uh, an infinity on Earth? Okay, next time, which might not have to stop. So we make the ha'orah. 
What? So we make the ha'ora as we, we make the ha'ora. We translate the ha'ora on a functional level. So ha'ora is nageya on us. Infinite. Hmm? Or, or is not, or is not, or is not nageya on us, but ha'ora is nageya on us. Ha'ora is what, how we utilize the ur. That, that's dependent on us, but ha'ora just comes in as a, like sun. The ur is the reality of our nefesh. Yeah, ha'ora just comes in, like, like the sun comes in, let's say, Right. Thousands yeah. of frequencies and light waves, but we only take, let's say, X and Y, and maybe that our light. That's our light. Yeah. Well, this is this is well, what we are trying. What you are trying to do is a little bit oversimplifying it, but I understand what you're trying to do. Uh, there are many different levels of this, but as an example, that is correct. As an example, as a physical example, this is correct. Higher form of understanding, it just comes to practice. <laughs> okay. Next time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you.